Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and today I would like to teach you how to balance the reaction of sodium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid, you know, sodium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. Now let's not forget the main idea of what balancing is all about. You have to balance the number of atoms of each element on the left-hand side with the number of atoms in each element on the right-hand side. In other words, they have to be equal. The number of sodiums have to equal the number of sodiums on the left and the right respectively, et cetera, et cetera. So the first thing I'm going to do is just write in these little lines, and this will represent the location of these uh, coefficients I'm going to place, and all the lines are written to the left of each molecule. Then I'm just going to start literally working with the first thing I see. I see an element sodium, right? So the subscript here tells me how many sodiums I have. So I have two sodiums on the left. I'm going to find my sodium on the right-hand side. It's located right here, and I have one sodium. So I have to balance it. It's not balanced. So now you're always going to place in a coefficient, generally speaking, on the lower side, okay? In other words, you're going to place in a value of two here, and the reason being is because now this is telling you that you have two sodium chlorides. So you have one here, and then you have another one right there. So how many sodiums do you have in total now if you have two sodium chlorides? Two, right? And that balance is now the two sodiums I had in the sodium carbonate. So that's balanced. Sodium's done, okay? How about next? Next thing I see is I actually see the polyatomic ion carbonate. Now, I don't want to break up polyatomic ions if I can avoid it. So in other words, I'm looking, I have carbonate here on the left. I'm looking for carbonate on the right, CO3. I don't have it. Okay, no big deal. That means I do have to break it up. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up and I look, I notice I have cop uh, copper. <laughs> wow. Copper. Man, it's getting late. Carbon. Carbon. That's a carbon. Uh, I have one carbon on the left. All right. And then carbon is only in this one compound on the right. Don't confuse C lowercase L with capital C. All right. They are two different things. And I have one. Uh, my God, I was going to say copper again. Okay. I think I'm done after this one. Uh, one carbon on the right. So carbon is balanced. Next thing I'm going to do is I look at oxygen, but I'm actually going to skip oxygen. The reason being is because it is in one compound on the left, but you notice how it's in two compounds on the right. I'm going to hope that the problem just kind of works itself out by the end, all right? And usually it does, but I always save those for the end. So I only like to work with elements that's in one compound on the left and one compound on the right, like carbon and sodium. Next, I'm going to move on to then hydrogen. So hydrogen is only in this compound on the left, only in this compound on the right. Let's balance it. I love that. We've got one hydrogen on the left, two hydrogen on the right. So you've got to place a coefficient of two there, right? So now you have two hydrochloric acids. Okay. Now chlorine. Is chlorine balanced? Well, you remember you have two hydrochloric acids now. You have to take into, this, uh, you have to take into account this coefficient once you place it in. So you technically have two chlorines on the left and... Well, you have two sodium chlorides on the right. So you actually also have two chlorines on the right. So chlorine is balanced. Now, the only thing that's not balanced is oxygen, right? And let's see if it's just going to hopefully work itself out, okay? So how many oxygen do you have on the left? Well, you have three, okay? And that has to now equal how many oxygen do you have on the right? Well, in this water molecule, you have one, so that's one. In this carbon dioxide molecule, you have two, so I have two. And is this a true mathematical statement? Does three equal three? Yes, and that means the oxygens are balanced. They might say, well, why the heck did you skip it? Because it was just going to work out. Yeah, it just so happened to work out in this problem. I didn't have to do anything, right? And that's hopefully what should happen at the end, okay? Even though oxygen was going to be balanced before, I just, it's a process I follow. I always save those for the end. They usually just kind of work in themselves out easily. Or there's one additional step I have to do, but it's a really, really small, simple step. That's also the benefit of doing a ton of practice, all right? The more problems you see, the more techniques you'll see, the more tools you supposedly have, you know, to solve problems. And that's when you become a good problem solver. And our channel is exclusively dedicated to that because we solve problems. We have thousands and thousands of solved examples out there. I think just in balancing alone, we have like 200 examples, right? So if you want to become an expert balancer, check out our channel, go to the videos, just pause the video, do the question yourself, and then check to see the answer. And if you didn't get it, guess what? I walk you through it. All right. So guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. Check out our channel. We'd love to help you with more. Take care.